Well, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about the EM31 and the EM34. This is the EM34 layout. So we have a transmitter and a receiver coil. And we want to try and get a sense for what it means. Uh, what is a low induction number? Uh, remember that when the induction number is low, uh, we have a direct relationship between the ground conductivity. That's the uh, conductivity uh, measured in the survey and uh, the ratio of the secondary and primary fields. And that relationship is valid as long as the induction number is small. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the EM31, the EM34. We're going to look at their frequency of operation. We're going to look at some extreme ground conductivities. and. Uh, we'll see how the induction number varies. So first, it's we, sh we should note that we have these two instruments, the EM31 and the EM34. The EM31 is the transmitter and the receiver coil are located on the opposite ends of a, of a rod, which is uh, carried during the survey. And, and of course, the uh, surveyor can read the ground conductivity right off of the meter and uh, you know in most cases this this would be recorded uh, uh, digitally so for the EM31 we've got a 12 foot or a 3.66 meter intercoil spacing from one end to another for the EM34 the spacing can be 10 meters 20 or for up to 40 meters <clears throat> Now, notice that the operating frequency for each one of these coil spacings, uh, notice that those frequencies are, are different, and that for the shorter intercoil spacing, we have the higher frequency, 9800 hertz. And then as we increase the spacing, we decrease the frequency of oscillation in the transmitter coil. This, of course, as you remember, you know, when we talked about the uh, amplitude, uh, how the amplitude varies as a function of distance traveled. Uh, uh, it's also a function of um, frequency. And the skin depth, as we see down here, it, it, if we increase, it varies inversely as the uh, frequency. So if we increase the frequency, a higher frequency here, we're going to decrease the skin depth. So. As frequency decreases, the skin depth then is going to increase. Uh, again, delta is the skin depth, F, F is the frequency of the electromagnetic wave, and we have sigma, this is conductivity, which usually has uh, units of moles per meter or millimoles per meter. Uh, you'll also see siemens or millisiemens per meter. And resistivity, which would be actually ohm meters. So. So we want to um, take a look at these two instruments, the different intercoil spacings, for two ground conductivities here. And then the idea is that we're going to be calculating the induction number for these different um, intercoil spacings and operating frequencies. So the induction number, again, is just the ratio of the spacings, which we have here, to the skin depth, which we're calculating using this relationship. So for a ground conductivity of 10 millimoles per meter, relatively small, we have skin depths of 51 meters for the EM31 at the higher frequency. Uh, 63 meters, 125, and 250 meters as the frequency is decreased. So we're getting greater depth of penetration here with this decrease in frequency. The skin depth is greater. It increases with frequency. The induction number for the EM31 is 0.07. For this case, where we have a 10 millimoles per meter or 10 millisiemen per meter ground conductivity. 
and it's 0.16 for all three intercoil spacings on the EM34. <clears throat> now if we increase the ground conductivity to 100 millimoles per meter, uh, the skin depths are reduced to about a third of what they were when the ground conductivity was 10 millimoles per meter, so we're down to 16, 20 instead of 63, 40 instead of 125, about 80 instead of 250. The induction numbers are tripled approximately, so we have uh, induction numbers of 0 0.22, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 for all three intercoil spacings for the EM34. So the question that you might have is, well, we've we kind of see what low induction number is. When is the induction number too high? We, if we increase the ground conductivity in the survey area, we're getting higher induction numbers. Are these induction numbers too high? What well, you know? What is too high? What's you know? What's when, when? When do we have to say, okay, I I I'm not getting a realistic estimate of the actual conductivities which are shown by the solid lines here. This figure comes from uh, McNeil's technical note. And you can see that the true and apparent conductivities begin to diverge around 100 millimoles per meter. <clears throat> and so up at around 100 millimoles per meter over here, we've got you know induction numbers of 0 0.5, 0 0.22. Um, in this 10 millimoles per meter range, we're 0 0.16, 0 0.07. So induction numbers down in this range, we're getting a good uh, agreement between the actual ground conductivity and the apparent ground conductivity, uh, calculated using this low induction number approach. And that's uh, so. What what this graph tells us is that well, if you're surveying an area in an area where the ground conductivity is uh, on the order of 100 millimoles per meter and greater, then you're probably up in this area here. You should be, you should realize that the apparent conductivities that you're reading are going to be a little bit high. So here we just have an example of a survey which a, a student collected. Uh, the contour intervals here are a little bit diff difficult to read, but this is a 10 millimoles per meter contour line. So we have low conductivity, ground conductivity in this area on the order of 10 millimoles per meter. We have a 2 millimoles per meter contour interval, so we're getting up to conductivities in the order of 22 millimoles per meter. So the induction number is less than 0.5 or 0.2. Uh, so in this particular area, Using this low induction number arrangement is, you know, works very well for us. Uh, there is no reason for us to be concerned that the numbers that we're measuring here might be a little bit off. So um, that gives you uh, hopefully a sense of what low induction number is, and when the induction number is too high, what is too high, and too high is going to be somewhere around 0.5 and, and higher. Okay, well, the next time we're, we're going to talk about dipole field orientations uh, and the different measurements that one can, can obtain using the M31 and the M34 together as a total set of measurements. And again, this is just recommended reading. Uh, gives you some background. It's, it's a fairly short uh, technical note. So more on this next time. Thanks for joining us.